Let's talk about Bitcoin prices. So Bitcoin prices are dropping sharply. They continue to be in a free fall. Bitcoin is down with 7.32% right now. Ethereum is down with about 12.27%. And uh, in the case of Bitcoin, we pretty much uh, grazed the high here from 2017 of 19,883. There's a lot of these crypto millionaires that are now going bust or they have gone bust already. Um, you know, because if you are training with leverage, there's a very high likelihood that if you're trying to buy these tips that you're going to lose all your money. Of course, people do buy them because, you know, if they get it right, you know, they can become millionaires themselves. Um, but what we're seeing now, if anything, is that, you know, a ton of these millionaires are actually just going bankrupt just by, you know, trading with too much leverage. But let's talk a bit about Bitcoin, right? So we're down quite a bit and there are different ways of figuring out how low we could go. Now, I personally think that um, around where we are right now, uh, in worst case, 10,000 would be a very good level to be a long-term bull. But we need to understand, though, that it won't necessarily be something like this, okay? For us to go up to 40K higher, we need to see the Fed stop raising interest rates. And they're due to raise interest rates today. So people think they're gonna raise interest rates with maybe up to 75 basis points. Personally, I think it's about 50 basis points. If it is indeed 50, that means that they're not as aggressive. And we could definitely have, you know, maybe a bit of a bounce here to say 28,000, but then again, probably lower again until they sort of tell us that we're not gonna be as aggressive. And because inflation is too high, you know, they will raise aggressively now, probably in July and maybe even in September. So f maybe from say between the July and the September meeting, they might start to highlight and say like, hey, we increase interest rates a lot, inflation is coming down. And now we're starting to see the economy slow down so we can take a break. And that's what we're looking for, for them to take a break. When they do take a break, maybe they'll take a break of uh, say uh, six months, nine months, and that can create a bit of a relief rally. And one can focus on Bitcoin, but also maybe some altcoins, because when we do have that rally, some altcoins will do 100, maybe 200%. And Bitcoin, again, is not as aggressive. Um, now, if you look beyond what's happening now and look at this from a long-term perspective, again, between 20K and 10K is super interesting. Um, firstly, we have something called the PUL indicator. So it's the blue line down here. And that indicator looked, looks at minor stress. So this uh, indicator is now at 48. Um, it was at uh, 47 yesterday. And if to give you a bit of context, in the summer low, we're down at 56. So we're below the summer low we saw. And this is the last major bear market. We're down at 41. So we're not too far away from that aggressive sell-off here uh, in, in like using this metric. Uh, like it effectively, it's as a good opportunity to buy really soon as it was in 2018. What this is actually doing, this blue line, is looking at miners. So when the blue line is at the highs here, it means that the miners are making quite a lot of high returns relative to their sort of annual average. So they're sitting on a lot of Bitcoin and obviously they want to offload some of this Bitcoin. Whereas on, when we're at the lower ends here, it means that mining profitability is really low relative to its typical yearly uh, profitability rate. And that would usually mark the lows in this index. We also have, as you might know, we have the stock to flow. Uh, so the stock to flow is something uh, made very popular by uh, Plan B, which is an analyst. And he, um, you know, was really got really famous because when the price was shooting up here in, in, in 2020, he said we're going to go aggressively higher. And the indicator was effectively telling us we're going to go up and up. And he, he was actually nailing it. So like every month, whatnot, he said, like, we're going to be up by this amount. Then we were up. And, and he was doing really good. But the thing is, is, is that what happened here is that we had the halving uh, of the Bitcoin uh, miners' earnings. And the next halving is not going to happen here until um, early 2024. So we're not really going to see that massive push again, as I suggested. Now, the problem with this indicator is that you can see how different, like, stock to flow, the, the price here is at... 800 and 700 actually i'm not sure exactly yeah they're measuring this in, in, in bitcoin prices yeah yeah so i mean we can look at current price so the current stock to flow target is 109,000. the price is at as you know 20 so you have huge gaps 
And unfortunately, he failed to mention that. Or maybe he did mention it, but people didn't really look into it. Uh, personally, by looking at his tweets, I think he was a bit too too optimistic on his own model. Now, this is an interesting model. It's also have pinpointed um, several lows in the market. Um, the thing is this, though, is, is that the error between the full cost value and the actual level um, is huge. So right now, this multiple is uh, around these lows down here. So you're looking at um, 0.19 per the, the longer term one and um, point, uh, 21 here in, in, in the short term one. But just in general here, like if, if you just, if you look, there are different ways of looking at this, but if you look at the type of variations we've seen before, so we need to go much more extreme levels. So this, what it means here is that the short term one have reached the price was just uh six percent of the full costed level so you know historically we've been down at least you know these levels depending as well where you get the charge from and so on so on long story short this thing says that bitcoin is oversold at ten thousand <laughs> yeah ten thousand so you you have this as well again that's why i say twenty thousand and and ten thousand because you have these two levels um the pul indicator i trust this more than, than this one um and then you have the other one as well and then you have funding funding rates let's see if we can load these ones i should have loaded them before we started to record um but the funding costs just in general are extremely high right now um the annual funding rates for some markets are like very very big so if too many people are long you have to pay for that. If too many people are short on the futures market, you, you need to pay for that as well. So if you look at the annual rate right now, if you want to short sell uh, Bitcoin, then you have to pay 27% of that value. In Binance right now, actually, you get paid 7.79%. Uh, so it's not really super conclusive here, like for Bitcoin on its own, but in some other markets like uh, here, for example, in um, Tron, if you want to sell Tron right now on FTX, you're effectively paying, you have to pay 318% financing fees. So it, it's, it's just ridiculous. So in other words, if you go short Tron right now on a futures, you're paying so much in fees that you know, the price has to like lose its value three times, if that makes any sense, before we're making any money. Look at something more simpler. This is XRP. If you short right now and the funding rate remains unchanged for the whole year um, and, and the coin itself doesn't move for one year, then you would have lost 15%. So on the funding rates, it's getting more and more aggressive. Uh, there's no question. You can see it's much more green than, than, than red. The only challenge here I see is that in regards to the Bitcoin prices here, the, the, it's much more mixed. You know, you have gate where you actually get paid to be long found Binance, we could pay to go long, and obviously Binance is the world's biggest exchange, so and it would be better if this was more uh, congruent, so more green really than than, than red, uh, but again, some of these coins here, so you can, you can actually look at these to get a bit of an idea of now where can you have a bit of a squeeze, uh, because again, sort of um, these markets, if I can get this to load, really uh, struggles. Um, like in some like Tron here, for example, whenever things do turn around, you know, you can you can get a bit of a short squeeze here because it just doesn't make, it's not really affordable to be shortest. So if we go back to the charts here, we're down with about 7% right now. So we have the Fed rate meeting. Now, me personally, I think they're gonna raise with 50 basis points. So if they raise with 50 basis points, we're gonna have a relief rally, rally in stocks and probably crypto as well, at least a short term bounce. That could potentially, lift the price sort of towards 25 28000 but the problem is here that it's super high risky um this could still go down a bit more so from a risk to reward ratio perspective there's actually there's no real good solution here for us um so i think the only thing i see in my head right now is that if they go ahead with a 75 basis point rate hike and this tanks further so bitcoin is down 
not just 7%, maybe 20, 25%, which I know is quite extreme, but if we get that type of extreme reaction, then yeah, I might be, be tempted to do some sort of a short-term uh, trade. Um, so trying to find, it's not really clear here, but if you look at ADA, for example, uh, summer loss here and some other coins, you did have a lot of moves where you have like down 25% and then before the end of the day, you sort of back to neutral or something like that. So one could potentially get something like that, but it is super high risk. So you need to understand that. The alternative is just to lay low. So obviously you're looking at uh, lower highs here. So the next step would be up and then maybe down and then up and then down. So you're looking for the end of this. And then the other thing would be so, so that's the more sensible approach. You know, give this a couple of weeks and then maybe see you have a break to this, to the upside, the same time as the Fed decides to take it easy with its rate hikes, not to be as aggressive. And then inflation as well, looking to roll over. That that could be something that's the, the, the third, the second option. And then the third option is just like long-term investors, long-term hodlers, like obviously up to you, do your own research, but using these indicators um, you know, doing some dollar cost averaging. In other words, buying a bit every month, doing that for the next 10, two years, uh, could, could make a lot of sense. But as always, when risking, for example, I would be happy to do this maybe for like a year, maybe one and a half at most. But then after that, you know, say, okay, this is this is enough. You know, I'm not going to allocate more to this and then wait for this to go uh, turn higher. Because, But from a dollar cost average perspective, we are at super interesting levels now per the PUL indicator. And then again, if we drop a little bit lower, you'll have the PUL indicator screaming by and you'll have the um, um, stock to flow as well screaming by. And if it happens all very quickly, so if it would happen like today, uh, say we drop another, say 10%, well, actually, if you just drop another 10%, we just down at 18,000, but say if we drop something crazy. I don't think we're going to drop 40% from the current levels, but if it would down to these levels, then that would obviously the, you know, being short futures would be ridiculously expensive at that point. But as always, there's always risks involved, as you know. At the end, you know, uh, cryptos do solve problems, but, um, you know, if you ever done any business abroad, for example, I pay a lot of people in different parts of the world where banking fees like if you want to transfer money from one bank to another it's like 35 dollars like if you want to pay someone in kenya for example um so obviously cryptos are better but the problem again is that for these people to be able to use cryptos it's not that easy uh, and and they would still need to pay some fees to convert it into their local currency so again right now it's a speculative tool speculative investment if anything uh so there's always the risk that this could go to zero as we have seen in the past which in other words means that if we are investing, especially if doing dollar cost averaging, is not make something crazy out of it, uh, but obviously invest sensible. And the idea with a dollar cost averaging strategy would, would be to keep it at least to 2024 uh, when we see that half thing, and then 2024, maybe 2025. And that's when it makes a lot of sense, you know. Uh, you know, you, you long X amount and then you get multiples of that. Uh, if we have like a crazy push to the upside, which I think we will have uh, definitely. Uh, so that's my take on the market. Okay, you have three different ways of dealing with this. Dollar cost averaging, that's already a good spot. The other thing would be uh, waiting for that splash lower. Maybe try to grab the dip. That's something you can do. Maybe feel a bit more sophisticated. And then the other thing, which is uh, more sensible, uh, is just waiting for... Uh, the lower highs to stop being created on the daily chart, um, and then maybe from there uh, take a take a take a position, take a view, uh, especially if that is coupled with the Fed uh, telling us that they're gonna relax a bit, that they think that they have inflation under control, which again can happen maybe in the next, uh, say maybe after the July July meeting, it could possibly be that quick, especially if economic indicators start to deteriorate quickly. Um, if you look at the non from payrolls for the last three months, they're not particularly strong compared to what we saw in last year. Uh, so maybe it can go a bit quicker, uh, especially some of these sentiment indicators. So we might have uh, a break here before, because if they break the economy, inflation would naturally come down as well. 
Okay, this concludes. If you like this, don't forget to follow. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I'm also on TikTok right now and, and on Instagram. So check that out. Thank you so much and goodbye.